Thanks for staying with us. Uh, very sorry that we're starting the paper review a little bit uh, late. Uh, we are unfortunately uh, not joined by our expected guest for the paper review, so we're going to go it alone this morning. And uh, we do hope that uh, you have the time to just uh, listen to the uh, headlines and know what uh, is happening around the country. So we are going to begin this morning with the Business NG. Uh, business NG deals with uh, business, of course. And the headline, the leading headline here is that rising food prices stop poor Nigerians from suffering. IMF to federal government. Stop poor Nigerians from suffering. I'm just wondering, the same IMF that has, has been giving us policies that a lot of people feel are the ones that are causing uh, Nigerians to feel what they're feeling right now. The inflation is rising, uh, the dollar is uh, rising, the Naira is crashing, and so many other things. People feel that the IMF should, be, uh, should not be so much a part of our lives as they are right now. We should not be thinking about all the suggestions that IMF is giving us because some of them don't work in a country like Nigeria. But they're saying that federal government is causing suffering, so they should stop it. Now, well, we do hope that as the federal government is taking all other advice from them, they will also take this one and do something uh, for the benefit of Nigerians. We have a, a smaller headline, the top left corner, uh, that says food security. Federal government signs 995 million uh, uh, pounds deal to create agri-mechanization uh, two hubs in 774 local government areas. Well. I also like that one, the sound of that one. We do hope that uh, that money will get to where it should get to. The mechanized farming will be something that the people, even in the villages, especially in the villages, will, uh, will, will have. Uh, so let's say people that are agrarian, they produce rice or they produce yams or cassava or grains of any sort. And this mechanized farming is such that uh, the farmers in those locations get to use these implements and, uh, and see what can be done. There will be a lot of food in this Nigeria if it is done religiously. Uh, Ramadan, price of watermelon surges by 53% in Kanu. <clears throat> I've always said this, uh, that people sometimes take advantage of whatever is happening and exploit the people. So sometimes it's not the government, it's just us being wicked to ourselves and all that. Because we know that the Muslims um, usually break fast with, uh, with fruits and all that, the, the oranges, the watermelon, the fruits that they are likely to use just searched up uh, like that. No, nothing like maybe it is because where we buy the, the fruit or the dollar has gone up or something, it just went up because Ramadan is here. So I don't know how we do this, but if we are people who like to say we, we, we like God, you go to church all the time, you go to the mosque all the time, we shouldn't be doing some of these things that we do. We know that the country is hard. We know that there is inflation. We know that there are a lot of things, but not 100% can be blamed on the government. We can blame ourselves as well. So please, if you are a seller, make your profit, but be considerate because you're not the only one suffering. You're not the only one who is going through what we're going through. Don't add to the problems of our brothers and sisters because they want to stay religious. They want to do good by God uh, according to what they believe. And then you want to exploit them. And like we would say, you want to kill them. Pata, pata. <laughs> Don't do that. Whatever you're selling, be considerate. Uh, CBN lacks liquidity to support Naira as derivative deals overwhelm FX reserves. Okay, that's according to the EU. Remember, they are doing some audit, there are some investigations and all that. So the EU is saying that the CBN lacks liquidity to support Naira uh, as derivative deals overwhelm FX reserves. Okay. Well, we we'll still have some other headlines uh, on, the, on the business NG. EFCC arranged three former Access Bank staff for stealing 16 million Naira. Uh, 16 million Naira. Okay, we have again terrorist kidnaps cause in fresh Kaduna attacks. We dealt with that in uh, 
top trending issues, so we know what that is. Atiku denies dumping PDP, tackles Tinubu. Uh, that's another headline. So it's been going around that he has dropped uh, PDP, and now he's saying he has not. Uh, Ningi resigns as chairman of Northern Senators Forum. You know, he's embroiled in this uh, brohaha in the Senate where he said that uh, some projects in the budget do not have, uh, some monies in the, in the budget do not have projects or a location where the project will be executed. Uh, and he said that um, 25 million, about 25 million of, uh, 25 trillion rather, of the budget funds have uh, projects they have location so they can identify the reason for which that money was budgeted but three trillion according to him he could not or he and his people that investigated uh, these or looked into the uh, budget could not find the project uh, to which this money is tied and the location where any project can be executed with three trillion naira so we're hoping that even though he has been uh, suspended, there will still be an investigation into that and find out why this is. We remember that this same budget, we've had a situation where uh, somebody said in the budget an extra zero was added when it was not supposed to be an extra, there was, there was not supposed to be an extra zero or something. And instead of uh, money uh, being in billions, it was in millions and all that. We've heard things like that. So there's a possibility uh, that uh, there could be a mistake. It's not, it's, not, it's not a very serious case that there is, well, it is serious if there's a mistake and a budget is passed with a mistake. But it's not something that is does not happen or has never happened before. So uh, he has been suspended now for three months and because he said that. But like I said in, earlier on, I do not uh, support what he was saying about marginalization of a particular section of our country and all that. Uh, people or states need money according to the needs that they have. We should be thinking about developing the entire Nigeria, not just a section and all that. So if there are places, for instance, we hear that the road network in the north is better than that of the south. So if more money, for instance, is voted for a road, better road network in the south in the 2024 budget, the northerners shouldn't cry that because this is done, the northerners should also have the same amount of money when they don't need it. That's the operative word, need it. I'm not saying that is what happened, but we should stop this uh, perceived marginalization that we cry about all the time. Just because something is done to one person uh, should not mean that it must be done to you and for you. We also have another headline here, Nigeria US dollar bond hit uh, by, by sell-offs. Okay, so that's the final uh, headline we're taking from the business NG. We are going to Nature News right now. Nature News uh, leads with the, uh, the headlines, Lagos government seeks 126 billion naira to save coastal communities from erosion, ocean uh, surge. Uh, Wu's federal government, private sector support. Okay, this is a laudable one. Well, there are communities that are at the, by the ocean and erosion might just chop off everything uh, that... Uh, the owner's land. So if they do this, is good. And we hope that the federal government is going to assist and make sure uh, that happens. Okay, we also have uh, another headline. Green program. Nigeria signs 995 million pounds agreement with Brazil, Dutch Bank. Okay, so they've signed that agreement for that, uh, for the program, green program. Uh, Alake advocates use of mineral e equity against foreign loans. That is Dele Alake talking now. He advocates use of mineral equity against foreign loans. And then um, climate change, population growth, threat to food production. That is according to Abdul Razak. Climate change, population growth, uh, threat to food production. Okay, I don't know how, how, how I, will, I will join that. I don't know how, how he said that, why he said that. But well, we do know that climate change could affect it. For instance, uh, in a place where 
you think that in June you are going to make a rice plot. You find out that in January there's so much rain that that same place is flooded. It means that for that year you may not be able to plant or you do not even know how to time it. You go and plant at the time when there will be flood, when there was not supposed to be flood because of climate change and it affects the farmers. We cannot predict, I'm talking we, you know, like I am the part of them, you know. Farmers cannot predict the weather anymore, the seasons anymore. Uh, there was a time when you could categorically say that in September this is the kind of crop that you are going to plant in a particular place because you know uh, the amount of rainfall that you are likely to have in September. In August there's going to be August break so you can do XYZ so that uh, when the rains return it will not affect the crop and all that. So but now it's difficult to predict and that is a worrisome thing so it will affect food production but population with the right mechanization of uh, farming I'm not sure population will be a big problem like that. It's, it's always a problem when you have too many mouths to feed, but we can always find a way around it. It's because our agriculture is not mechanized. That's why we even talk about food nowadays. We are, not, we are not more populated than America. We are not more populated than India. They are not dying of hunger. We are not more populated than China. They are not dying of hunger because the population involved in agriculture may not be so much, as much as we have in Nigeria, but they are mechanized farmers. And so because of that, they produce more and they're using technology and all. We don't use all those in Nigeria. So we should have a rethink about what we do to agriculture and with agriculture, and then food security will not be a problem at all in Nigeria. That's what I think. Nigeria must feed itself and export, says Tinubu. Yeah, we've been saying this for a long time. So the only way to go is to do the needful when it comes to agriculture. We've been talking about mechanized farming all this while and the use of technology. Try to uh, deploy a lot of funds to that. Let's see how it works. Dr. Mobariola replaces Jamo as Nimasa DG, a former um, member of the executive panel in, in Lagos, is now the uh, Nimasa Director General. We have that news as well. It's also on Nature News. Oyo joins Lagos, bans use of styrofoam packs. Okay, we got that yesterday as well. Oyo is now part of uh, the states that have banned styrofoam. In Lagos, it has been banned. So when you're going to an eatery, uh, whether it's an eatery or a roadside vendor that we call Mamaput, you cannot find styrofoam anymore. But you still find uh, plastic containers and all that. We know the menace of these plastic containers as well. The only difference, like Rumer said yesterday, is that um, uh, while there are scavengers that go around picking these plastic containers if they are discarded, nobody ever talks about the styrofoam. They always leave it there. So if there's going to be any recycling, it is going to be of the plastic and not styrofoam. That's why it is such a serious issue uh, to a ban styrofoam. So if it is causing health hazard and then it's causing environmental hazards, then it's the way to go. I do hope that all other states will do the same. But we also have to be very aggressive about our, our orientation of the people, the health benefits of not using styrofoam and the dangers of using styrofoam, uh, people should know. And then alternative methods, alternative uh, things to use instead of styrofoam, because uh, you can't, we can't, not everybody can go to a roadside vendor and say, because a lot of people eat from the roadside vendor, whether we like it or not, we're going with your suit and you're, you're taking from a mama put. You've, I've seen a lot of people like that. Suit and tie, they, they are stopping by. Some in their cars, they're stopping by to get some rice from, from a bar and uh, gari. That reminds you of something else. Okay, well, but people do this. And if there are alternatives, let the people know and advocate that the people start to use this. So maybe there are paper bags. Paper bags will, will, will decay when you throw them away. Maybe they are going to be using leaves or anything. I, I don't know. When we were growing up, we were buying rice from leaves or in leaves. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that's it from um, the Nature News. We go to Punch newspaper right now. Punch newspaper says, 
Ranking senators get 17 billion Naira constituency votes. Ningi suspended. Okay. Um, the riders are senators got 500 million Naira vote each, says Jarigwe. Ningi resigns as Northern Caucus chair. Okwayami says 500 million Naira for constituency projects alleged uh, some lawmakers plotting Akwabio's removal. Okay, now Jarigwe, Agom Jarigwe is uh, the senator representing Ogoja uh, or Cross River North northern senatorial district and so he said that uh, senators got 500 million naira vote as constituency uh, okay just vote 500 million naira that this amount was for uh, senior senators and ranking senators uh, ordinary senators like he who is a, a new person in the senate uh, did not get 500 million and so where was this 500 million budgeted? You know, where did it come from? May, maybe it came from the floating 3 trillion naira that uh, Ningi was talking about and all that. But now Ningi has been suspended. He has been shot off. He has, uh, his mic has been offed, <laughs> like they say, uh, off your mic. So they have succeeded to off his mic and all that. So they got 500 million naira vote. Uh, for what? What are they going to use that money for? Well... Um, Army bus illegal gun factory in Delta arrest eight people. Well, uh, they should serve sentence by being producers of uh, uh, guns for the army instead. So let them confine them, give them the materials, let them produce the guns for the army. Let them serve their sentence. Even if it's 20 years, they should not just uh, waste that talent. They are now using it for negatively. Let them be made to use it positively so that the army will not need to import uh, guns. I'm just saying. But sometimes uh, things like that uh, are more beneficial than you know being negative. So if they are going to serve a sentence, let them serve the sentence producing guns for the army so that we can tackle banditry. Um, Ayede Tiwa declares Governor Bid gets uh, reps 18 lawmakers nod. Okay, that is the governor of Ondo State who took the reins after the demise of um, Akere Dolu. He's now indicating interest in uh, running for governorship. Uh, and he has already had 18 lawmakers nod. So they have, they have backed him for that. Um, well, then <clears throat> police grill for, uh, Prime boy over petition by Mobat's wife. We'll see how that pans out. APC PDP clash over Fubara Akwabio's political jibes at Wigwe's burial. I don't know. Sometimes we should just keep politics aside and do what we should do. Um, if they went to a morning house, as it were, and threw some jibes at each other, that was really wrong. Um, Tinubu seeks Ramadan prayers. Jigawa uh, slashes working hours. Okay, federal government probes 107 varsities over fake degrees. Then abductions. Reps tackle NSA IG deploy squads in Kaduna Kanu. Those are other headlines on the punch. We move to the Guardian newspaper right now. Um, the Guardian newspaper leads with the, a story we've seen in punch. Um, Budget padding, we are all culpable. That's what Jaribwe said. Uh, 500 million Naira awards to ranking senators on settle. Uh, exposed National Assembly's rot. Okay. Now, Nigerians lament rising airfares as experts blame exchange rate. It is no longer news. Court strikes out uh, suit seeking Igbo's exit from Nigeria. Revival of night patrol as a prelude to reforming the police. Okay, that's the suggestion there that was made. Bandits capture another 30 as IGP visits Kaduna. All right. Uh, Naira's free fall, lean budget, hobble Nigerians, Nigerian mission abroad. There's also another headline. Uh, World Trade Organization inaugurates... 1.2 million dollar facility to boost food safety in Nigeria. Well, this money is coming in. 
Okay, where is it going when it comes in? Well, those are the headlines from the newspapers. We had Guardian, The Punch, Nature News, Business, NG. Those are the newspapers that we got for today, and we've just given you what the headlines are. Do well to read up on all these stories, because if you get informed, uh, it means that you have a broader mind, and you can contribute more meaningfully to the development of Nigeria. There are things that you can see, and you know that you alone can prevent uh, those things from happening, or you alone can facilitate uh, the things uh, to happen, or you can be part of the group that will do the needful for those things to either happen or not happen for the benefit of Nigerians. When you go to the social media as well, you will see very trending issues, especially an issue like a woman who made a review on something, and tomato uh, precisely, and now she is in a legal battle that is almost overwhelming her. And how do you fight a, a company that has so much billions that has vowed that over their dead body they are going to fight this and they are asking for even compensation? I've seen a lot of times where even big companies uh, that produce uh, drinks or some other things, we, we find insects in maybe a bottle of Coca-Cola. And then when someone does a review and says, this is what I, I saw, it's either they will apologize to the person or withdraw all the things that uh, could give them that kind of a bad name or investigate at least. But now I don't know what part of these things I've mentioned was done, except that there's litigation against the woman. Um, maybe what she said was right. Maybe what she said was not right. We do not know. Now I'm sure the evidence is gone but it has to be words of mouth we are going to be banking on. Whatever happens, we hope that the truth will be unveiled and then um, there will be peace everywhere. And that's the much we can take on our paper review and we'll take a short break and when we return, we're going to hopefully be joined by our guest for the Hot Topics. Stay with us. <music> 